Attention, please be advised. The following episode contains spoilers. Don't say we didn't warn you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it's too short. <laughs> it's too short. <laughs> it's only on Disney Plus. <laughs> Welcome to Mandalorian, the nerd on show that covers the Disney Plus streaming show, The Mandalorian, now available on Disney Plus. Thank you. Uh, we <laughs> exclusively, uh, as if the company owns but it. But it's also on Disney Plus. It's also on. It's also on Disney. Playing Plus. on Disney Plus. But if you are having a hard time finding it, I guess you can resort to Disney Plus. Provided on D- Disney Plus. Correct. Uh, published by Disney Plus. Correct. And uh, we'll keep this Disney going. Plus. But before you turn off this <laughs> podcast. Uh, Let's <laughs> Thank you for joining the, us. Let's introduce let's, the host. <laughs> my name is Ollie, one of your hosts. I'm Corey. And I'm Tom. And this episode is brought, is brought to you in part by the wonderful people of the Nerd on Nation, powered by Patreon. Patreon. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it is a platform where you can support your favorite creators, such as Nerd on and other podcasts like it. Uh, and you get, with a tier from $1 to 5 to $8, you get to have exclusive access to never before heard episodes a discord community where we talk about all the things that we love about nerdy stuff and being part of our showcase such as the nerd on update as well as guess that grump segments in our topical episodes that's that's correct yeah it's pretty awesome uh and, it's a lot of fun yeah and uh we post uh snippets here we also post like uncut stuff uh larger video format stuff from our youtube channel and uh if you also want to support the show we have a running a uh, promotion with Comixology right now. Oh, hell yeah. That uh, we do. Yes. Uh, but Through the we, end of the year. Yes. So uh, using uh, the promo code NERDON5, if you're on Comixology and want to read some comic books that have to do with Star Wars, like yeah. Lando and Vader and uh, so uh, whatever they got. Um, well, but, there's some new comics that are actually leading up to the new movie coming out. Yeah. They introduce things like General Akbar's son, oh. Admiral Akbar's son. And to general I was actually yeah. just thinking about it. If you have DC Universe like I do, then Comixology is probably the best place for you to buy comic books that aren't DC, such as Marvel, Image, and all the True. other mm-hmm. wonderful publishers. Uh, for any $15 purchase or more, again, use Nerd on 5 to get uh, as a promo code to get $5 off that purchase up until December 31st. Yeah. Uh, use the link nerdon.io backslash comicsology. Yeah. yeah. Or you can use it to get Klaus, which was our last week's episode if you haven't Fantastic heard that comic. Yet. Definitely check it out. Check yeah, out the episode. Right. But this episode is going to be focusing on chapter five. Uh-huh. The, the gun swinger. The gun swinger. swinger. <laughs> the hash the slinging gunslinger. slash slinger. Slash slinger sling slasher. Um, we're accepting now, I think, that there are 30 minute episodes mm-hmm. with. Maybe a little extra, maybe if they feel spicy. Maybe they couldn't get the full assembly cut down. I think that's just the we just have to accept that that's the show. That what? they're thirty minute episodes. I don't know. Yeah, what, I, like, don't know I don't know if you're anyone expected. Like that. Anyone, I don't know what. Else. I don't think they set any expectations. Has, has someone People said assumed, that. Has someone said been angry. Like, why are these not hour did long? Did someone shows? assume they'd be an hour? They did. I think so. No. I would also say this. Everyone that's watching. That's or on everyone. The that's audience expectation. Yeah. Uh, look at every single Star Wars TV show. They're all. Half Thirty hour. minutes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and it's um, you know, this show is very reminiscent of like the, to use another fictional care Rick Dalton care, era of westerns, very much. Mm. Where they're thirty minutes, the yeah. arc is complete by the end of the episode. Yeah, uh, you know the big whatever baddie is dealt with by the end of the episode, and they move on to the next place. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to your new daytime television. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It feels <laughs> and, like and, welcome and to your new water have, Texas like, Rangers. Yeah. And and I I love that format. Like me it's, too. It's, I'm, I'm actually I'm fine with it. really excited about it. And this yeah. episode, I think, kind of it, cemented it for me. It kind of harkens back to the oh, let's go watch Howdy Doody time. It's it, like, well, it, yeah. not even that. Not not so much that. But like, if you ever watch a show like uh, uh, Davy Crockett or something like that, where you would have these celebrities come. It, it also helped me realizing this helped me like accept the fact that Tycho was only in one episode because you're like oh. If it really is like these old westerns back in the day where Rick Dalton would come Rick on Dal- right, for an episode to be the bad guy and get killed off, like it makes sense that we've seen, uh, you know, Taika Waititi is in just in one episode. Or hold on, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, yeah. don't get too far into how many, who's in what episodes and all this stuff. 
I do have to make a quick announcement. Yeah. I apologize oh. for anyone listening. I wasn't going to spoil anything. Oh, okay. We're just going to talk about I know, that's all that you said. I was well, like, hold on. carefully. No, yeah, no. So I, I will say this. Last episode on Mandalorian, I uh, spoiled some information about- You were a bit uh, brash. Uh, I spoiled some information about characters who would be in future episodes. I won't say the names or what episodes it would be. Uh, and we got reached out by our uh, lovely listeners on Twitter, mm-hmm. which you can always do if you want. We to, always uh, love. And yeah, we, if you want to like say what you love and what you don't like about uh, the show, we want to always try to make the best show for you. Um, and so with that, I'm going to say this. In episode eight, who's going to be? I'm kidding. No. <laughs> no, I'm going to double down. My name's Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> Fuck gamers. Okay. Uh, um, so I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so, you know, thank you for uh, shouting out and uh, speaking out. Love that. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, staying away from, from that territory. But um, in episode seven. Still, I think it still stands that we're, we're getting these, or at least what's so far being presented as these like, one-off character right with kind the of interaction the story arc that ties them together being the they're, Mandalorian and the Baby Yoda some would call right. it their episodic yeah yeah. Uh, some would say it's almost an- anthological yeah and um, I think they're very much in the Dave Filoni type we can, we can kind of CSI or uh, uh, Law and Order no Dave, Dave, Dave Filoni I know but I'm just saying it's very Law and Order-ish where you like yeah you have the and, arc by the end you're like aha it's done so, I mean, we can just transition right into uh, our first impressions. Yeah. Yeah, we can do first impressions, uh, and then we'll do a little bit of the production of what the episode had in, yes. in store. Yeah. Um, so, who wants to go first? Uh, I um, can do it. Go. Unless yeah. you... No, go for it. Uh, Let me reopen. Right off the bat, <laughs> I just got to say, uh, I'm always excited when I see Amy Sedaris in oh, anything. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think she is a gem. Uh, it's nice that she's working on another Favreau project, because for those of you familiar, mm-hmm. she was an elf, stealed every, stole every scene in Elf. <laughs> Uh, and listen, she steeled it. Go listen to that episode. Uh, and uh, so, so I was excited to see that. Uh, being someone who is a minority supporter of the Phantom Menace, I was also mm-hmm. excited to see the little droids, yep. the little pit droids. Mos uh, Eisley. Yeah, man, it's Mos Eisley. It's Out fucking of nowhere. Tatooine. Yeah. Super surprised. Uh, Easter egg after Easter egg yeah. uh, for us, which was very, very nice. Um, at first, when I first digested the episode, but I was it, like, Was it at first? At first, <laughs> when I digested the episode at first, at first I was like, just at first, uh, I was like, did I enjoy that? Because uh, I'm the name of the actress is slipping my mind real quick. Who played... Uh, oh, um, oh Ming Nawa from yeah. S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. I was Nguyen. bummed that she, her arc is complete within an episode, but then that's when the realization happened for me that I was mm-hmm. I had just been talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with someone, and I was like, oh my God, this is... Star Wars is of the era of, you know... These these spaghetti westerns and stuff like that that were like on the fly. Let's finish the arc, that kind of thing. So yeah. after I came to that realization, it helped me cope with the Taika death uh, mm-hmm. in in the first episode and that kind of stuff. And I ended up liking it a lot more. Um, I enjoyed the Easter eggs a lot. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite episode. Yeah. Uh, because three still holds that that title in my heart. Yeah, it's hard to. Pass um, it up. But it was nice. It felt very 70s era Star Wars and I really loved there's something I really loved about that mm-hmm. as a maybe you know nostalgia kick Ollie. yeah it was um, I again had a lot had a couple of the very similar realizations during this episode and again same thing like I don't know how much I enjoyed uh, I mean I did enjoy the episode it was I think it was pretty decent mm-hmm. and um, it was interesting that like you, you realize that Star Wars with this format is letting us do that. Is letting us have the characters like IG-11 or IG-88 mm-hmm. or whoever. Is IG-88 in this? IG-11. IG-11 is in this show. Yeah. Um, to get characters. He's like, the moments guard, like yeah. <laughs> right, he's a, yeah well. And they're using a lot of comedians, which is interesting because yeah. I just learned this for for some reason I it avoided my trivia, but the blue guy from the first episode, mm-hmm. that's Horatio Sands from SNL. Really? Yeah, his first bounty is Horatio Sands. From SNL. Oh Jesus! Uh, and so, the, and also the guy who drives the ice speeder on the ice in that first episode, who mm-hmm. gets eaten by the fish, uh, him, is yeah. also another stand-up comedian from Just Shoot Me and other things. Yeah, like I that, recognized so. him from stuff. Anyway, um, but so. that's what I mean is that you can bring in these one-off like guest guest high-profile actors, and like have really cool, interesting characters for like a half an hour or whatever, yeah, and not have to commit to like a saga. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So it's really. It's really nice in that sense. So, like the assassin and the sort of junior bounty hunter. This episode just gave crosser. us yeah, double crosser. Yeah, double crosser. Felt very uh, Han Solo, very Lando Calrissian. Very, it was very much like in that Western thing. And I'm 
and like her interactions with him and like that stuff was pretty cool. And yeah, I mean, it was really, it was just a lot of really great, I think, like sort of moments in the life of how cutthroat it is out here on the outer rim. Yeah. You know, like that kind of thing. So I, I dug, I dug it from that perspective. Pit droids, like, come on, like that's. That made me happy. Best fan service you could have given for this episode. Um, yeah. You know, if, if we just, uh, what I was thinking, well, there's a, you know, there's a scene, not. Spoiler alert, obviously, but I like, mean, when he's walking, about it. We're, when he when he's walking out, I mean, this might be favorite part, kind of, but when he was walking Remember out, this was initial impressions. When he was <laughs> when he was coming out of the of the shop for the first time onto the streets of oh, Tatooine, yeah, I was like, I was thinking to my head, and he's just saying, "I'm here to buy moisture evaporators and bubble <laughs> gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum or something." <laughs> Go down the Tashi State and get some power converters. Yeah, that's all, that's all I wanted. That's all I was thinking of. So, so it was cool to have that sort of like fan trip. Uh, so Tom, bring us me, down for me. Yeah, my initial reaction. Uh, yeah, I think this is probably the worst. I think this is probably the worst episode so far. Mm -hmm. um, not saying like it's garbage and blah blah. Just in comparison, to just in comparison to all of them, I think it's probably the weakest. Uh, mainly because uh, nothing really happens at all. The yeah. only the main thing that happens in terms of a story is like there's a boot next to Ming Na, Ming now Wen's face. There's the a lot day. of theory about yeah, who's that. Yeah, the, who's the And person. theory doesn't do anything on screen. So, like, it's cool. It's fun. No, that wasn't my argument I know, I know. I'm just saying, but it's like on screen, it's like nothing happens. Like, we get a character that we, you know, we get a lot of characters that nothing really happens with. And then we get uh, Mando, uh, who just kills people. But such is the Western. Yeah, so it's That's like. That's like every Western TV show is. Nothing really happens, and everyone kind of ends up right back where they were. But, I mean, there's even at a point where it's like, I don't even care to root for anybody. Because it's like. Well, obviously, Mando's not going to die. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously, like, the only person that I, like, hopefully she, like, was... Uh, Amy Sedaris' uh, character. Amy Sedaris' character. Hopefully she doesn't die. The mechanic. Yeah. That was it. But I was like, junior bounty hunter, right? like, you... Really? Well, at that point, you're, you're, you're going for a little bit of that popcorn value of, like, that combined with... You're you're you love the character, so you want to see what shenanigans they get to week to week. It's it's much so, like much like uh, you know Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know Buffy's never right. gonna die. Yeah, right. I know that. But so then, when someone's when, gonna double cross her, and you're, are well, you or are like, you, I'm when that double cross happens, it's with the character that's been in for more than one episode. Yeah, and so it's that's not right. with someone who's like, this is my first time. What are you trying to really double cross the dude with Beskar armor? Like, you know, literally it's worth a lot now at this point. Yeah. You know that could take a shot and you plan to take his baby. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like a Batman. It's like you plan to, 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 <laughs> to, to, blackmail, to blackmail him. him? Good yeah. luck. And, blackmail this and so that's the crazy thing. I mean, I liked Ming-Na Wen's, uh, you know, guest appearance. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a cameo. I'd say it's a guest appearance. Yeah. yeah. Guest um, I liked, you know, seeing him interact with another bounty hunter, but we've already seen him interact with other bounty hunters before. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... The Easter eggs. Yeah. And so for this, it was more just like, cool. It's a, it's a story. So, but to me, it's definitely the weakest story. Um, but I think overall, like... You know, this is to me in, in some sense like I could love to see no more Star Wars movies, mm -hmm. and I would kind of love to see, see just different Star Wars shows. Yeah, that'd be. Um, I agree. And awesome. I think where they could definitely hit their stride and made me think about it. I'm like, they're definitely sitting on a pile of yeah. of IP that mm -hmm. they can make Star Wars into a Game of Thrones. Yeah, oh, yeah. they don't have to make Star Wars into an MCU. Mm -hmm. They can make Star Wars into a Game of Thrones. Um, and I think that's actually to me to mm -hmm. their benefit. Do longer episodes, but do ten episodes, or not, or you know, do six. I episodes. mean, not we're not talking Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're talking no. a different show because I, I mean, don't even think that would work for. But even, also, yeah. like, it could do that with with another Mando, with another Maybe. character. Yeah. It, it could be great. Like, it could be like the first Mandalorian. Yeah, and it'd be hour long epics. Mandalore. Yeah, and That'd it'd be, be it'd be it'd be cool. So like, definitely like having that week to week and having a TV show sensibility and like, I like it. Like I'm watching other shows as we speak as well. Like I'm watching, I'm on the second season now rebels and like, it's just littered with, are you Dave liking it? I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot of things in there that, uh, animation gives way to that live action can't get away right. with yeah. and vice versa that like, you can't get some of the seriousness in animation that you can get with live action. I think they can get pretty weird with star Wars if they wanted to, like the way, like, like WandaVision, whatever that's going to be. Well, I'm like, I'm they like, they can have different genres. I want a character that's a, tw uh, a, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Twi'lek? Twi'lek. 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 It's, uh, the, tomato, tomato. it's the, the race that has the, the like long appendages over their heads. Uh, oh, not yeah. to be confused with, um, like, uh, Shoka's, uh, no. Uh, there, there's actually Droop Down. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the first, I mean, I there's think, no painted color or anything. I like think that. the first one you saw was in Return of the Jedi, was with the the guy who works for Jabba the Hutt, the mm-hmm. guy with like the big boobs on his head, yeah, with the red eyes, and those are typically men. Um, but the women are you can be like green and blue and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. And I was like, oh, because uh, anyways. Uh, but yeah, so should we go into production and get, then get into the episode? Yeah, and I have yeah. some uh, of the Easter egg drops and fan theory stuff I'd like to discuss a little okay. bit as well. Yes. Uh, so uh, we all know everything at the top, um, but the director for this episode is Mr. Uh, Dave Filoni, who know best known for Clone Wars or Star Wars Clone Wars, uh, Star Wars Rebels, and Star Wars Resistance. Um, they're all uh, also provided by Disney+. Plus. And uh, I was looking at Ali for that uh, dramatic like, pause. Uh, uh, the, other than Pedro Pascal, we have Amy Sedaris, who is uh, best known from Strangers with Candy, Elf, mm-hmm. and Puss in Boots. Um, Jake uh, Canaval, who is uh, best known from Nurse Jackie, Romance and Cigarettes, Eat, Brain, and Love. Um, and Ming-Na Wen from Mulan, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Street Fighter mm-hmm. as chun Yep, I have to just say Chun Li. Uh, mm-hmm. The episode uh, with the credits as well as the sneak peek, or as the previous, is thirty-five minutes. But without that, it's about thirty minutes. Um, the episode premiered on December sixth, twenty nineteen, and the Rotten Tomato score since last time we recorded went up five points critically. So it's at a ninety-four percent critics and ninety-five for audience. Mm. Nice. So, but you know what's weird? Weird. You can't read one review on Rotten Tomatoes. Why? They're just not there. Oh. Uh. Interesting. But their, their Google reviews are there. Huh. Uh, but co- Rotten Tomatoes reviews aren't there. It's crazy. I was weird. looking for it. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes is whack anyway. It's those Disney matter. ninjas. Yeah. As we say, <laughs> the points are all made up and <laughs> the points don't matter. Um, yeah. I uh, Should we just jump into favorite parts here? Yeah. We've yeah, got through everything else, right? Oh, wait. Brief synopsis of the episode. Oh, right. So uh, Mando and the baby land on Tatooine, most mm-hmm. likely to be... Uh, specific uh, after getting in a ship battle which they barely escape from yeah uh, where he steals his line loved that bit by the way that's my line <laughs> I am a sucker you'll learn this about me who, yeah. if you're, this is your first episode I am a sucker for the let's say something before we kill the bad guy oh one liners are like they need to come back more they need uh, for those of you who are wondering you- at the top of my list it is from the thing where the thing roars at Kurt Russell and yeah. he says, "Yeah, fuck you too," and goes to stick a dynamite at it. <laughs> the, so the tough thing about one-liners though is that like you can't really plan for them. Who's the king of the one-liners? Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course. Yeah, and he he says you can never plan for him. No, but I think there's like no. a half-hour video of all of his or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, the best ones are the uh, they land on Mos Eisley. They are meted by meted. I'm doing, I'm doing well tonight. Steeled and meted. They are they are met by a uh, mechanic with three pit droids, um, played by Amy Sedaris. Mm-hmm. He pays for the docking fee, but to get it all fixed up, he's going to need more money. So he goes into town looking for work where he meets a uh, wannabe uh, bounty hunting guild member. Who um, pretends to be all cool. Pretends to be all cool, mm-hmm. finds out it's his first one, smashes the puck so that the Mando has to use him in order to find the target, uh, who, who is, is a legendary, ass- legendary ass- assassin who has killed countless people from the guild. Yep. Uh, um, the phrasing is, whoever's gone after doesn't make it till sunrise. There you go. Uh, and we find out why. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we go into the Dune Sea of Tatooine, uh, where we are greeted by a couple of Tusken Raiders, sand people. Yeah. Um, in a very cool moment. A barter is made. Uh, and they get safe passage across where they've met with a sniper, mm-hmm. uh, which is their target. So they wait until nightfall. They both take off on their speeders, uh, which are, I forget the actual, swoop bikes, excuse me. They are swoop bikes, right. not speeders. Take off on their swoop bikes using flares, to uh, break the uh, the scope. Which was cool. One thing leads to another. Mando gets shot off his bike. One, uh, uh, yeah. our, our new guy gets up there, has he little fisticuffs, and the Mando sneaks. Fucks up a shot, yeah. Uh, sneak did it up on her, and they arrest her. So mm-hmm. uh, they have only one swoop bike left. So the Mando mm-hmm. says, I'm going to go look for a do-back after some negotiation. Stay here. She tries to talk the new guy into, hey, let's work together and bring this Mando in. He's betrayed the guild. He's worth countless amounts of dollars. You'll be a legend. And he says, that's a good idea. Shoots her in the gut and rides off on his swoop bike. Uh, one thing leads to another. Do back ensues. Mm-hmm. The Mando finds the guy there with the baby Yoda uh, with the mechanic played by Amy Sedaris at gunpoint. Gets him to drop his gun. He puts his hand behind his back where Amy Sedaris sees that he has a flare. Very um, John McClane style. Yes. Uh, shoots the flare Dips around a, a barrel, shoots the boy, shoots him right in the chest, uh, and they take off happily ever after. After paying 
what looks like a shit ton of money. That was Jamie a lot Spears. of money. It looked like. Will this cover it? Well, uh, yeah. Well, well, yeah. yeah she she charged extra for babysitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why. And then was very. And We're, then I think also Mando's got just a good dude. More than. Oh yeah. She I mean, yeah. obviously he's been there more than once. Yeah. And they have a relationship. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, I think that about sums it up. Bum, 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 bum. Yep. Right. And then we see mm-hmm. boots. Yeah. We see Walking boots. towards the, uh, the corpse. corpse. Brown boots, black it. boots, green boots. <laughs> Sorry. So. <sighs> I think that was about 10 minutes long yeah um yeah so favorite parts my absolute favorite parts is is the tuscan raiders the te- the sand people uh that's a <laughs> yeah, yeah okay, and here's here's one of the reason is this show has now made them canonly sneaky yeah. so remember when it sneaks <laughs> up on luke and it's like yeah. ah, right in the goggles it happens uh again and another i forget what else but now it's canon that they are just sneaky that. as shit. Like asking yourself, what the fuck? Yeah, well, how do they get there? Shit. Well, if they're like um, John Tortoro's character from Mr. Deeds. Sneaky, yeah. Sneaky stuff. They're, they're also sneaky, like quiet. Sneaky stuff. They, were, they weren't like attacking. No. No, yeah. no, no. no. I they, think they, they choose know, to be loud. I think, yeah. what they, I think they know what Mandalorian armor looks yeah. like too. Yeah. Uh, they'll attack a farm boy. Right. Uh, and the moment, just having that moment of them like negotiating and... Uh, it's just a side you don't get to see of the yeah. Tuscan Raiders. And like, very like, often. like they, they, they see themselves as the locals and everybody else as the invaders. So that's yeah. like, it's interesting, like Native American vibes there. Yeah. And, it's and like, he okay. barters them safe passage for the binoculars. Yeah. Uh, like, anyway, that was deal. probably top of my list. That's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think my favorite's actually probably when uh, the child, that's the name, uh, Baby Yoda uh, gets out, uh, out of the ship. Because uh, mm-hmm. uh, Mando puts uh, the baby away and to go do his job but then uh Pelly is just playing games with the little droid bots and uh all of a sudden uh she goes and takes care of the baby mm-hmm. and just kind of like i don't know good good something with bones and the feet and that was she great. likes the baby a lot yeah of something course she bones, super cares good. about the baby um, and i think that's that's kind of wonderful yeah. yeah i liked i like her character was a really great addition to this mm-hmm. show yeah uh it, again it gave it that very it, 70s start like new hope vibe well also it's like cool the first person that doesn't come and attack you yeah Mm-hmm. You know, it's like someone that kind of loves you like a older sister would. Yeah. Um, also, did you notice when she asks the pit droids, should I do it? One throws his hands up like, I don't know. One nods and the other one shakes its head. Yeah, no. I, know, yeah, I was that's like, funny. great. You guys are a lot of help. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I liked her and like, uh, you know, when, when every moment with her and the, and the baby Yoda, like whenever, like when Mando comes back and finds out the baby is missing and then she's like, I'm awake. And then it starts crying. She's yeah. like, oh, no, 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 yeah, no. Like, what did you do? You woke it up. Yeah. So it's like, it's it, that's, a, that's a fun piece of it. You know, like. Uh, yeah. a, a bit of a breath from like the guns and blazing which also I'm sorry I'm going to steal this one uh, sec- a, a good favorite part of mine is actually how the episode starts it's very Dave Filoni-esque where we're in the middle of oh, the action of, sequence yeah. Yeah. Um, just to get to and that's kind of the thing with all like, I've been that's noticing line. with Rebels that. and Clone Wars it's like at the end of the battle this is where the narrative starts and I, I like that style because that works really well for TV, especially like mm-hmm. this. Yeah. Um, Get their attention. Some, most, you know, shows, hour-long dramas are just like continuation stories. And so it's like, it feels like one giant movie sometimes, um, depending if it's different directors and shit like that or how strong the showrunner wants to hold on to it. But like with this, it's like, cool. Yeah, start in the middle of a battle because we know, I to me, I was actually starting to get to the point where it's like, I don't know how good this Mandalorian is actually. I think he might be just as garbage as ja- as Jenko and Boba. It's clear that he's not a gr- like a like a great warrior, but he's like on his way. He's I, pretty he's skilled. smart. I would he's say smart. this. I think super smart. He would best Boba, but he might have his trouble with Jenko. I would say, just no. cinematically, I just feel like. I mean, Jango went against, Jango went against Mace Windu. Everyone dies against Mace Windu. Palpatine died, like, got whooped by, you know, Mace Windu. Yeah. So, so went about it the wrong way. I'm just saying. But also, Jango didn't have Beskar. Yeah, that's true. true. But, uh, yeah, but also, that, he didn't get shot a lot either. And this guy got shot a ton. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think my favorite moment, honestly, is just him landing in the beginning to Mos Eisley, like him being like with the radio to to the planet to mm-hmm. Tatooine and being yeah. like, yeah, we're Doc, whatever, like, great, I'm putting in, you know, locked into the Doc or whatever. Yeah. Like, just having that happen was awesome. It was great. It um, was a good feeling. It's like coming I, home. And then I really liked their attack. They're like attack oh, there's swoop bike. The swoop bikes oh, with yeah, the flares. It was nice to see the like, swoop bike. That's smart. Like, I, this is a really cool encounter where I'm watching you, like, time these flares to where you know she's got to line up the shot a little did bit. Did you guys ever play any game like Shadow of the Empire? 
No, I didn't play that one. So Shadow of the Empire, you are this character named Dash Rendar, mm -hmm. who's like friends with Han Solo and Luke and all that kind of stuff. And it oh. kind of takes place, if I'm recalling correctly, it takes place between like New Hope and Empire or Empire and okay. somewhere in there. During, yeah. right before uh, Return of the Empire. During the original trilogy. Yeah. Before uh, And one of the main things you do is you're on a, a swoop bike out to meet Luke in the middle of Tatooine. And oh, so okay. seeing the swoop bikes, I was like, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Dash Rendar. It must be right before Jedi then. Were you, yeah. were you gonna, I was gonna say, were you gonna go uh, get parts from the Tashi station? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, but it was, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Must have been right after Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, it was cool to see those in action. And they're like, race up was like, felt really good. Yeah. Uh, Reminded me a lot know, of But he was the, in Carbonite. No, yeah, I mean, to me that kind uh, of, I mean, it, I liked this, seeing it, seeing uh, how they take out a sniper because it's like, to me, it's again, it's pretty rudimentary because I feel like that's like video game logic. It is. Uh, and it's like, that's what happens. Like, they can't shoot you. They can't see you. See you. But some of the things I did like about it was that like, how the Mando knew is like, oh, that could only be shot with an MK, you know, rifle, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Like, then all this like, Inner stuff. If, we, if we alternate flares. Yeah. And then also it's like, we're going to wait till nightfall. It's like, cool. He knows what to do. It's like, I like seeing effective characters and it's like, cool. He knows what he's doing. Right. And it's like, yeah, this all makes sense. And so like seeing Star Wars do that, in in this realm, it, like it, it, it feels nice. It's also interesting that like, he, I feel like he could have gone for her at any point. Maybe mm -hmm. he didn't know there was a bounty on her head until that moment. Well, I, th I also don't think Who? he really cared. Mandalorian. Yeah, but also like, if someone else has it, I don't know if he would have accepted the mission as well. Because mm. I mean, this guy sent tends to. I they, was that they a high mentioned bounty? her before. They mentioned her. Did they, yeah, did they in an earlier Fennec, episode? Uh, yeah. Her faces? Oh. Possibly, but I mean, also, it's kind of like I, you know, going back to video game logic, it's kind of like you don't sometimes you don't go for certain missions and you just want to get the yeah. other one that's going to get easier and also get you more money, right? And like other until the child, he really had no other reason to do yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. Also, like I guess the guild might be in, not necessarily all connected. Like it, like he might be dealing with the local system. Yeah, with Carl Weathers' plan. Yeah, it's whatever. like it's the current mission set in this yeah region this region versus exactly that region. exactly like World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so I mean, like, yeah, and and to me again, like he doesn't like if obviously to me again in a fist hand to hand combat, it feels like he probably would have bested uh, the assassin. But then, like again, why would he go for it if there's probably not that much money? Yeah, and I don't even think uh, that's com why I, compared uh, to the child, there is not even nearly enough money. Yeah. Well, I wanted time. to, yeah, that's what I wanted to check. I want to go back and check the other pucks because this one was 10,000 mm. credits. So I want to go look to see what, what the other ones were. The other ones were. Yeah. I mean, it still could have been high, but then also like, again, efficiency, right? And plus he probably didn't want to get away too far from his Mandalorian yeah. cave. Mm -hmm. So I'm also really excited to figure out what Navarro is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I mean, obviously it was the Mandalorian enclave, but I want to know what happened there. Yeah. Where'd they go? Favorite, another favorite. They, they said they're going to move it. Another favorite part. It's not even a part. It's a frame. It's finally seeing those damn stormtrooper helmets. Oh yeah, from on the, the trailer. On the pikes. I'm just like, God, finally. Yeah. Uh, and you mean like cool. you mean from it, seeing them on the trailer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. But then seeing them in this film, uh, in this uh, episode, for, finally, and it's like how he walks through the city with the cape and, and what stuff. Tatooine thinks of the Empire. Yeah. So I'm like, cool. Yeah. I'm down Their with boy, that. Luke, they're like. We're on his side. <laughs> Shit's rough in there. Uh, but no, no, no. Navarro or Luke she, just went. You don't like the Empire. When he's talking yeah. to the assassin, she's saying, we "Don't see many Mandalorians around, ever." And she goes, "Must have survived Navarro, or something to that effect." So something happened. Some like mass Mandalorian extinction. Was happened that it, or was she referring to just the tough tuffle or whatever that they that she learned? Was that on Navarro? That must have been the planet. Possibly. All I know. I just that because I feel like she repeats it almost verbatim to him. Oh, okay. All I know is that in Rebels, uh, there's still a lot of sections of Mandalorians still around. Yes, and, and the Protectors is the one that I recently watched, and that section mm -hmm. was like allied with the Empire. Yeah, um, but I don't know what section that this Mandalorian's from. So because so I don't think been, we heard the yeah. name. Of I thought the, the same before. thing when I saw it when, when she first says Navarro, it. Like, Navarro, and then when she says it to the to the kid. So that must have been the name of the planet. I was like, oh, I wonder. Oh, she must have been referencing that. But, yeah, you're probably uh, right. Yeah, that's probably where that big battle went yeah. down in episode three. But I mean, to your point, they need to. Re they're relocating somewhere. Yeah, and he's got to go back for that. Uh, for that left thigh. The Mandalorian's <laughs> bounty hunter guild planet is called Navarro. There I'm looking is. it up online. There it is on the Google. Uh, see, I thought I saw there that, and then I saw other ones where they're like Mandalorian enclave. 
And I was like, huh, what? It's probably maybe? it's probably common knowledge that that enclave was there. Yeah, and that's true. Um, yeah, because so, I don't think they're in hiding. Yeah, necessarily. So Navarro is that planet? Yeah. Ah. But now they've got a. Now they've got to find on, a new place. As always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So pretty much, yeah, it didn't survive Navarro. As in, like, do you think we'll circle back with? Then we must, right? I don't, I'm, hey, look, I'm not here to talk about future okay. episodes because I get in trouble. You know. Yeah. <laughs> do you know that? I mean, I will say this though. Is Jean Favreau and <laughs> well, no. Apparently, they, <laughs> they, they, the publicist, the PR agency for whoever does this shit, uh, dropped the synopsis for the last episode. So it oh, is shit. out there, but I didn't. I didn't read it. I didn't. I'm not gonna say shit. I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> I'm gonna read it. Uh, for sure. Any other favorite parts? No. <laughs> I have. Uh, I have a lot of favorite parts, but they have to do with the Easter eggs that I will talk about at the end of the episode. So we can. Just, we we can. Them. Yeah, save them. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll gush more at the end if we think of things. But let's move Fa- to favorite character for the episode. Favorite character. Amy Sedaris. Amy Sedaris. A hundred percent. Pelly. Pelly is that Pelly her character's name? Uh, I just. Uh, yeah, I'm a. I'm a sucker for Amy Sedaris. First yeah. of all. Um, I just think she's got some some charm, some mm-hmm. some spark that just I like every character she's played. She had dialogue. I agree. Yeah, yeah. It was between her and the what? sniper, but I oh, because she enjoyed. had dialogue. Yeah, everyone okay. else had dialogue. Not not that much. The, the other, sniper, than, other, other than and the, the, other than Mando, other than Mando. What's her name? The sniper. Uh, the actress. Yeah. I, oh, f- or oh, the the character's the name character. is Fennec something. Fennec, like she was cool. I just think of Fox. That's why. But Fennec. it just wasn't. There wasn't enough of her, and and, and that's one of oh, the yeah. things you are not. I guess robbed of is sort of like the harsh term to use, but it's just you don't get you to don't, explore the characters as much with this format. You get her in two scenes. Which is the point? Yeah. You get you get her yeah. as like a badass person, and then that which which could it. be spun to like a good thing because like I want to learn more about her and what her deal is and why she's so. And we might. Son. Who knows? You might. D- judging by that teaser at the end. Maybe she force ghosts. Yeah. Shout out to George Lucas. <laughs> Shout out to Qui Gon Jinn. <laughs> uh, qualms. Uh, yeah. We can move qualms. Who wants to um, go first? I can start us off. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, it's too short. <laughs> it's too short. <laughs> it's only on Disney Plus. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've come across this with a few shows as of late, or a few things as of late. It seems to be mostly TV, but. For oh, some reason, lying. night scenes are not lit well enough. This show <laughs> it's is weird to say. Dark. It's it's very dark, and like I'm thinking of just the night scene, and specifically the fight between the kid and her when he sneaks up behind her or whatever. I turned my lights out when I watched it, so it wasn't bad. I it's the only light in my yeah, room. So I so, couldn't do that because I, I watched I, it on my on my lunch break yeah. during the day. And I, didn't, I didn't have that issue, and I would say this: I think that's actually stemmed because of the push of digital filmmaking because a lot of people like really dark scenes nowadays like you can have dark though i feel like with with still a few key lights to like get you better edges that, and that, get you that everyone that guttural thing was me putting up my uh quotation fingers yeah <laughs> i was like uh, ish because i mean like because i remember when like blair witch project came out everyone loved just handheld uh, uh oh god yeah yeah cin- uh, cin- gave me fucking cinema verite i guess yeah. vertigo or, or a gorilla shooting wherever the hell it is but a lot like um with uh a film called collateral michael mann developed these like lights for it and shot it all in digital it was like huge that he did that and people mm-hmm. like loved that aesthetic yeah people also just kinda, fun fact about that he made all the lights yellow on purpose because la was going through transition where they were changing to leds and mm-hmm. a big part of la at the time was the yellow light, street lights and so that's also a so thing. he preserved it on film which is pretty cool and that's yeah. also a thing for me like i really don't like white led look I like yellow tungsten hard shadows, but a lot of people typically prefer very flat. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm I'm pretty much a minority, I think, in that sense. I now I'm I'm with you. I, I like dimension. Yeah, like, I want to see like? Nolan likes high contrast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fucking <laughs> high contrast. Brilliant. I mean, which is what you need for a band. Uh, and but. so, uh, but I mean, I like that for everything else because it, to me, you you're setting a tone, you're setting emotion. Yeah. But some people like not saying with what your qualm was, but like some people just like want to see everything. As if it, like it was in a sound stage, right? Um, but yeah, I do agree. Like if you had like one key light, like just kind of shot, and you had it like flagged off to just yeah. show a face. Because I mean, there's like there's a couple things famously, but one of them that I will never forget is the Fast and the Furious, mm-hmm. um, the drag race scene. The first one. The first one. Okay. There is a massive spotlight oh, at the sure. end of the street. Oh, for sure. For no reason, like in the like within the scene. Oh, yeah. For no reason. Oh yeah. But then you zoom back at a weird, like, uh, there's, like, a couple aerial shots where you see that spotlight, even. And oh, yeah, it's for like, sure. what? 
oh, like you don't have to go that egregious, but like there's a there's a, there's there's chance to play. Like, yeah. Have fun with color. Well, that's like, the thing. It's like, do you want to like, see or do you not want to? But that's see just it? me, my preference. Yeah. Like, and that's the tough. What thing. do you like, value in the? To me, of I'd rather doing. see it um, instead of kind of guesstimate what's happening. Right. Um. Unless it's super intentional, when you can tell it's intentional. This, if, like, if you have issues with it, right? You can tell when it's intentional. Yeah. Is, is what I. I yeah. don't think this was intentional. Yeah. This was just that's a, a that's dark. A, that's a mistake. Scene. Mm-hmm. Right. That's someone say. Um. I didn't care for the uh writing for the. New Guildy. The noob. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It felt a little... Sucked. Flat. And I I, I, I don't want to... I think the actor did fine with what he was given. Yeah. Um, you know, because that's tough. But I I, it, I was disappointed because Filoni is usually pretty good. But then I realized he writes with other people a lot. I also this would is, say he this. He wrote alone. Fil- I mean, okay. And this is also an argument and a discussion point to just talk about. What is Star Wars? Right. Right? Yeah. Is it still the children's movie with space wizards? Or is this something different? Because Filoni... Well, the movie, yes, but the TV show, no. Because it wasn't. that's not how it's targeted. This show. Yeah. But all the other shows are. Right. And so that's why I'm like, Filoni's strength is showing, and it's coming into this, and it's not... His strength is kids right Not translating. Well, it's, it's, very, it's very different than how you would perceive it on this, because it's like it just seems like, yeah, it tells a story across, but like with the voice actor, and Corey, you know this, like yeah. you amp it up. With film, you pull it down. Mm-hmm. And so, like, with that kind of writing, if you had Steve Blum behind it, it sounds oh, bad. Oh, you're saying he, his strength is writing animation. Possibly. Right. Maybe writing characters that... Because until this point, I haven't felt that way about the dialogue. And maybe mm-hmm. that's yeah. Favreau's strength mm-hmm. is live-action dialogue. Maybe, yeah. Um, but that character felt very... F- um, just felt flat for me. It was very generic. And like I think nothing... there was a lot of opportunity to make it really interesting yeah. as a character. Very, wanted it to be very Lando. Like, his arc is very Lando-ish mm-hmm. uh, until Lando flips back once he realizes well, that. Well, except we don't care about the character at all. Right. And we, neither does Mando. But he could have had more more of that debonair kind of charm to well, him. And, and so that actually kind of brings it to my point a little bit about the character and that he, the character himself is a qualm um, because it kind of does mean a lot when a star is in that role. And I feel right. weird to say that, where it's like, if that character had been Woody Harrelson, that would have been a different thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If that character had been Timothy Chalamet, Anton Yelchin, a younger kid-like because character. Because they would have brought their... There would have been some kind of Taren? thing. Huh? Their flavor. Taron Egerton, probably. And that's, that's a their shitty... Their imprint. It's a very shitty thing to think about and say. But star power is a real thing, and it does affect how yeah. we ingest things. And the writing could have been better. Yeah, and but like the, like this character, it's like, Mando has no deal worth to deal with them. is a means to an end. And then, like, I, you guys, okay, so going, harken back, th- shout it back, you know, throw back to our Cowboy Bebop episode. Mm-hmm. Remember the episode where he took on that little young protege and, yeah. like, taught him how to, like, be like water and fight martial arts and stuff? And then yeah. at the end, he, spoilers, dies. Mm-hmm. That, to me, would have been a little bit nicer because then we felt more sympathetic for him. Right. And, you know who could have played that role really well and sold it is, do you know who Ben Feldman is? No. Have you ever seen the show Superstore? No. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. You'd know Ben Feldman. Ben Feldman. This guy. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh For yeah. Sure. I think he would have brought that little extra star power. And Not it, too much, mm-hmm. but enough where he's the kind of actor you immediately care about because you've seen him before. And yeah. You're like, oh my god, I like this guy. Uh, and I think that n- that is no fault of the actor who was cast. Mm-hmm. At all, I think it has. It's Obviously, every, it's, that's a great opportunity for it's, his career. It's everything. Too. It's directing. It's writing. And to me, it's like that's why I would say like this episode. I think is the weakest of all. Mm-hmm. Of them. And it's just because like you kind of threw a character that the whole narrative surrounds this character bringing in narrative to Mando's. The life. casting was wrong. Um, I mean, possibly. I mean, like to me, like I didn't think certain people can act. And all of a sudden, I just like, oh, you just need a good director. Mm-hmm. It's, you you yeah. can act, but they just need to pull it out of you. Yeah, and it's like, oh, you can. Direct. This you guy was writer. this guy was yeah. a legit actor. Like he he did it fine. Yeah. But like it, you're right. You needed that little extra star power to be like something. I mean, trust this person. There right. you know him. There is a little subversion, and it's done well with camera. Where like when you first see him, he's like sitting on, at like the Han booth, Solo. like Han Solo. So you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. Not only uh, at a booth, but at the booth. The booth. And so for me, I would feel like, oh, okay, this would be cool if he is more like an asshole. Like, hey, you need this money, and you're going to take me with you. And then he betrays him and then, like, never dies. He becomes, like, Hondo's character in Re- Rebels. Yeah. Um, But they kind of 
cool, let's make them cool, then also let's make them sympathetic, but then also let's make them like impressionable, then also let's make them like silly, then also let's make them, it's like, so they did a lot with the character in such breakneck speed that you're like, he almost became invisible at that point. Mm-hmm. Because Who he, is he? I've never seen the true. Yeah, thing. because you kind of don't stick with him at all. Where a star power actor could give you that little idea. Yeah. Scene direction. That, <laughs> and that to me, like, that's why I would say like, uh, Fennec, I mean, now Wen's character is much better. Because you have that idea. Well, it's like, I know who she is. I know what I'm going to get out of it. And also, it's like, I know what I'm going to get out of it. And so when a surprise can happen, I feel more gratified from it. Yeah, you're right. Because, like, especially casting someone like who... I know I'm right. (laughs) (laughs) As always. I'm done. (laughs) I'm not going to feed into that anymore. No, No, with someone like Ben Feldman, who doesn't typically play a villain, having that turn Mm -hmm. could catch you off guard more. Where his turn, I was like, okay, that's who he is now. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know who this actor is. That's a really good point. Yeah. Um, But, uh... Yeah, so that that this whole story kind of really took a weird turn for me that like I kind of almost wanted it to be more of Peli babysitting Yoda. Hmm. I'd rather have that because if it was just going to be Mando go out, shoot something, get caught, she's dead, comes back and nothing happens. I think a more interesting take on it could have been to re- to save that character could have been like what you're talking about where maybe he's going to betray him, decides not to and then he dies saving him. Mm-hmm. I I think yeah. that he shouldn't have betrayed him at all. I mean, sure. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm just throwing ideas yeah, 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 out there. Yeah. But I mean, like, kind of in that same way, where it's like, it's like, hey, you know, like I'm going to be a, like a bounty hunter just like you. Da da da. It's like, let me know the way. And then it's the audience surrogate. It's like, how do you do this? Where's best scar armor? Blah blah blah. And now it's like, yeah, da da da. It's like, I'm going to get that. We're going to get the prize money. Blah Boom. blah. And then dies. Yeah. And or, it's like, or you see even, maybe like, like maybe he could like be starting to commit to like in a different scenario would be committing to become a Mandalorian. Like he's taking that under his maybe it's like you're kind of like a foundling in a weird yeah. way. Yeah, or and like or maybe if this young bounty hunter had so like had insight. like had like a wife and kid, and yeah. the only reason to turn a bounty hunter because he had to put food on the table. Yeah, but then realize just like, making him more sympathetic. Would... Yeah, one or the other, where it's like either you're super douchey but don't kill him, or super sympathetic and then kill him. Yeah. So for me, um, almost as if like Mando should have woken him up and like work with the struggles of he, like yeah. that he that the kid is going through yeah. although I liked that moment are you done yep you done, done. <laughs> totally just waking you up um I don't I don't have any more comments besides that but I feel like that's a pretty big one because the whole episode rides on that for yeah. me yes. uh, for me that was the only thing that stood out to me of like I don't enjoy that the rest of it I was mm-hmm. like okay yeah. cool I dig this but mm-hmm. having said that it was still cool to get a pit, a, an insight from a lore perspective into like how you get into the what it takes to get stuff. into the guild. I, I do like the that. pressures. And, uh, like, yeah. and I would say also another qualm is kind of like, I think a little bit of a boring shot selection. Sure. Um, there is a good mm-hmm. shot of uh, Amy Sedaris's character going next to the ship and the f- camera follows her through the legs and it has a really good moment to do a rack focus instead it just cuts away. And I'm like, mm. it's boring. <laughs> yeah. That's Dave Filoni, I guess. Again, Possibly. animation over live action, uh, maybe. Possibly. Um, any other qualms? <gasps> oh, Random really? favorite part, though. Oh, yeah. When he breaks the fob. Oh, yeah. And oh, then yeah, you could tell Smashed Mando is supposed to be like, what the fuck, man? He's like, now you have to... It's all in my head. Oh, when yeah. he breaks the puck. Yeah, the puck, whatever. Oh, yeah. The, uh, that was a good way no, of he getting him... the fob. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he smashes the fob. He breaks the plot device. How yeah. about that? The fob is the... Deet, deet, yeah. Deet. He breaks that. But I'm talking about the kid breaks the puck. Yeah. Oh, he does? Yeah, the puck with all the, the information, information on the... With a little hologram. Got it. He breaks it, and then Mando's like... He's like, now you gotta take me with you. I memorized it all. So if you want that bounty, you gotta take me. Yeah. Um, so, if there are no other, yeah, no qualms. qualms. No other qualms. Uh, a little bit of Easter eggness, and then what the fan theories going around are. Um, so the first Easter egg that I noticed is that that cantina obviously is from New Hope. Mm-hmm. And do you remember the one rule about that cantina? No droids. No droids. And what is it run by? A droid. Droids. Droids. So some shit has changed. Oh fuck. Yeah. Even that droid, like, did some shit. Also, and uh, pl- someone out there, please correct me on this, but I rewound it and paused it a couple times. I'm pretty sure the droid that pulls up to the cantina mm-hmm. in one of the establishing shots is R5. Oh, wow. D5, D4, which is the one Who's, uh, uh, in New Hope when it's uh, motivator breaks. Oh. And then R2 gets to go yeah. with C3P instead. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's that droid because there was an entirely canon book that came out that told the story behind that. And then really? he he did that on purpose so that R2 could be with 3PO. Oh, weird. In the book, uh, it's worth the read. Yeah. Uh, R2 is trying to sabotage R5. <laughs> uh, and R5's like, yo, dude, what the fuck are you doing? 
Uh, and R2 explains to him that he's part of a rebellion and he's trying to make sure that he gets picked to go with C-3PO. And then mm-hmm. R5's like, look, if I don't get picked, I'm going to, if I don't have a owner soon, I'm going to be shut down. Uh, so I can't help sure. you out there. And R2 felt sympathetic. So he's going to let him go. That's why R2 is just sitting there being like, burp, burp, burp. but then uh, I guess overnight in the book, I believe it's overnight. R5 is like reflecting on it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I really loved the passion that R2 talked about the rebellion with and what he's doing. And so what he does is he purposefully springs his motivator to make sure that R2 gets picked. So he like sacrifices himself for the rebellion <laughs> to make sure that R like the hero we didn't need. Uh, I want to so see the, I want to sure see, so, see a movie of that and only beeps and boops. So a yeah. better, <laughs> so you, they could do that with Wally. Oh, I know. I was gonna, so a better arc than this episode. I'm not kidding. Yeah, a better arc it. than this episode. <laughs> so yeah, that, I'm pretty sure that's R5, D4, who has now his fixed motivator. Obviously is living the high life. That's great. Um, Good for him. I don't know if you guys remember Luke referring to Beggar's Canyon at all when she says I, at I the do. end of the episode. I, that was very familiar. Yeah, so at the end of the episode, she's like, take it out of here. I don't know, Beggar's, Beggar's Canyon. Canyon. Beggar's Canyon is where he that? shot Womp Rats. That's what it was. And then she calls him a Womp Rat. Yeah, she calls him a Womp Rat. Yep. Uh, the other thing, and this is one I actually found online, um, the she's no, uh, she's no good to us dead is the same exact thing Boba Fett says to Vader when they're going to freeze him in carbonite. He says, he's no good to me dead. Mm. So I think it was a nice reference on Tatooine where Boba Fett Died. Right, right, right. Quote, unquote. Uh, now, the theory going around, obviously, is who has the boots in the cape? Who do people think it is? It's Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Uh-huh. Um, and this is not a... Sp- I'm going to say something. This is my theory because it was in the trailer. There's a long cape. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know how to Boba say... Fett, I don't think it had a long cape. This is my point. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a long... It's a long cape because the cape goes down to the ankles. But his much like was, Mandalorian's. But his mm-hmm. cape was down to his shoulder blades. Yes. So my 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 point mm-hmm. is that it's not Boba Fett. It's Jango Fett. No. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't I need a head. Wrong. Giancarlo Esposito yeah. has been shown in the trailers to have a long cape that goes oh, down sh- to his feet. It's Saul Guerrero. Oh, it's yeah. him. So I'm assuming it's him. That's my theory. Uh... I, I, again, it's all trailer based. It's not Saul so Guerrero. I'm not everyone. sure. What's that? I said it's Saul Guerrero. It's not Saul Guerrero. It's not Forrest Whitaker. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Again, I'm not. I'm not looking ahead in episodes or anything. Oh, yeah, no. Just my theory. No. Off, just I mean, if he becomes a big bad, because that's what happens in Breaking Bad. Spoilers, as well. Um, it'd be cool if he was like a uh, Mandalore. I mean, that would be really cool. Or Mandalorian, or Mandalore. Like the, he's like one of the like fucking the, the Mandalorian. He's Mandalore. like one of because isn't there like their uh, Mandalore? Yeah, there's one. Every, if that's one the case, I one. believe he's part of the Empire. Because uh, there is a sect of Mandalorians that, that joined the Empire, yeah. right? Mm. And uh, he was the one that hired. There's some other Werner stuff in the trailers. Herzog. I won't, in case people only watch the trailers once, I won't go into very much. But there's some other information there that I believe. I think if he is in it, if it's him, I think mm-hmm. he's part of the Empire. But we'll see. We'll have to see. This is all just fucking. Sp- I mean, we have point. three episodes or, left. Or if he says, we're going to start a first I know, order. <laughs> I know how Tom would feel about seeing Bobby Fett in this. Uh, not your favorite Oh, well, no, to me, I'd be like, redemption period, baby. Would Re- you be fuck, down if Re- it was? Fucking, to me, okay, look, I love a good, like, uh, setup. Right. Like, seeing a certain character show up in Clone Wars at, like, the third season, and then that character showing up in the second season of Rebels is really cool. Uh, and you're like, oh. <gasps> Redemption, because yeah. I only saw you be a piece of shit in this movies, and now you could be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I would love to see because to me, I think that I I don't want to not like characters. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. like like that's a piece of shit character. That's a garbage character. That's a person's ca- trash. Like if everyone's super dope, then it's like there's so many things you could love about it. Yeah. But then if everyone's garbage, it's like why does everyone fucking? Because I'll like be it? honest, if it is, I will not be upset. No. No, no one. Obviously. I don't think. I, I don't see who would be upset. Uh. I would love a little showdown between Boba Fett That'd be and Mandalorian. Dope. Um, well, and like in a world where we're not going to get a Boba Fett movie or whatever, like, and I would be also nice. be fine with Mandalorian winning that fight. Yeah, for sure. Bobby Fett. This is the Mandalorian's time, not Boba's. Uh, however, I it's unlikely. I feel like I, I only Boba like my Fett. Boba. I in think my, in if my Star Wars is going to do something with Boba Fett, I think they're going to save it for a Boba Fett movie. Or some sort. Or it might lead into like, oh, they fight and they don't kill each other and then it leads into a movie. Or Django had yeah. a second son. <laughs> Maybe. Another clone. Um, uh, Cool. So yeah. I think that wraps us up. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited for this show, y'all. Yeah. We have uh, three episodes left. This is like the first cliffhanger we've had. It's great. It is. Because most of it just ends with them on a ship. 
like no, the first episode is pretty big cliffhanger. True, yeah. true. But this is like since since the pilot. This yeah. is the first like non episodic. Well, pilot. I think I think we're starting to ramp up to some harder story. Something things. big. Yeah, uh, I'm excited for it. Because how so many we'll episodes are there again? Three, eight so total. Like three left, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think one of them is going to be completely removed from the plot. Really? Because of like. I forget. I don't have it on here. Yeah. But it's like we one of the episodes. The episode. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. One of them is like a different writer based on a story. That's like none of them. Telling none of the you. other ones is based on a be, story. It's going to be about the the Mandalore. <laughs> That'd be dope. Maybe. Hey, maybe that's what they mean. It's like from from the canon somewhere. Yeah, from based the, on Abby, the story. From the legends. Dope. Oh, my God. Please. Yeah. Please let him um, like tell a story or something. But anyways, what do you think? Do you, do you think it's Boba Fett? Would you be upset if it was Boba Fett? And... Do you think the Mandalore would beat Boba Fett? Put your comments below. Put like, comments, below. Subs sublime, and smash my bike button. Or you can you just <laughs> come join the conversation with some like-minded individuals over at our Discord at Patreon. Again, you can learn more. Patreon.io. No. Nerdon.io backslash Patreon. There it is. And, and learn a lot more about the show, including all the other shows we have going on. We have Cables Crusaders. We have the Nerd on the Podcast Popper. We have the Nerd On update. You can check out all those shows out and more. NerdOn.tv. And well done. Add us on everything because we we like getting added at. Make it happen. Yeah. So ring us out, Ali. You know the drill. As always, Nerd On. Broadcast.